Okay, so this is our training program for Simeo School Hub, dubbed uh, The Journey, uh, Exploring and Learning Campus Journalism. So again, may I request everyone to please uh, mute yourselves so that you will not disturb this uh, session. Enhancing the journalistic skills of students and promoting responsible and free journalism. So the very purpose of why we are conducting this training is to um, you know, um, enhance or uh, develop the journalistic skills of your students, uh, particularly those who registered for this training. Uh, we're going to teach you how to write news, uh, editorial, features, uh, column, write column, and also sports. We're also here to teach you how to draw cartoons as well as to lay out uh, your uh, paper. Okay, so this is the this is how our school looks like. Um, so this is Quezon National High School. So we are from the Seno City Quezon. Um, our school is a junior high school with 350 teachers and around 8,000 students. So the best practice that we would like to share with you of course campus journalism um, the coconut which is the official publication of uh, our school happens to be one of the philippine uh, one of the pioneers in philippine campus journalism so it was first published in 1928 and uh, considered as one of the country's best in terms of quality articles winnings in competition and as a laboratory for budding journalists so for 90 years, we have actually defined our role, fulfilled our mission, and nourished many young writers to be who and what they are now. So we have produced active personalities in mass media like uh, Joseph Moro of GMA7, uh, Dindo Amparo of ABS, Anjo Alimario of CNN Philippines, uh, Robert Chaworski Abanya of Philippine Daily Inquirer, as well as the acclaimed writers like uh, Victor Emmanuel, Carmelo Nadera, and Nestor Pistelos, to name a few. So, um, this is some of our achievements. Uh, we've been finalists uh, for two consecutive years in Gawad Patnugot, uh, Outstanding Campus Journalism Program Implementer in Region 4A Calabar Zone. So far, uh, these are our, our winnings in the National Schools Press Conference. Uh, so we, uh, we were winning in the NSPC since 2013 until last year. Okay, and this is our uh, winnings in 2017. We were uh, the sixth best school paper and then last year we won third place in the editorial section so the name of our training program is the journey exploring and learning campus journalism so our main objective is to enhance the journalistic competence of students and teachers in Southeast Asia 
and produce their own newsletter. Uh, we're not lucky enough to have participants coming from other uh, ASEAN countries. So far, we have 14 schools, um, all the way from Sambuanga del Norte. Okay, our resource speakers, by the way, are the teachers and students of, uh, of our school pub uh, publication. So, composed of seven school paper advisors and seven editors of our publication. So, our target participants actually were primary and secondary school students and teachers of Southeast Asia. So, each school uh, actually have seven students and two teachers will serve as the advisors. So our training duration will be starting today until August 30, but we will only be having uh, sessions every Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Bangkok, Jakarta time. That's actually 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, here in the Philippines. So our mode of delivery is of course the WebEx teleconferencing system. This is the, uh, the app that we're using. Uh, it's a virtual conferencing software that allows the users to collaborate online. Okay, so again, we would like to request Conferencing system. Um, uh, this allows us to uh, to meet online, so as opposed to the face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, so even though you are coming from uh, as far as Zamboanga or Visayas, you can actually attend this uh, training program. So this is the uh, mode. Uh, this is the meeting link, the WebEx number that you use in uh, attending this session. So we also have the YouTube channel link where we will uh, upload the recording of this session. And then for the official training webpage, uh, you can go to sshthejourney.wordpress.com. of delivery will be in English, although from time to time, we might as well code switch. Okay. Uh, the expected output for this training would be a four-page newsletter of each participating school, uh, hopefully made by the student participants under the guidance of their teachers. So the prerequisite would be uh, basic knowledge in Microsoft Publisher. But uh, if your students are adept in using uh, other other uh, layouting software such as Adobe InDesign. You may use uh, you may use that. Uh, we are not. Uh, we only indicated that we are requiring you to have basic knowledge in Microsoft Publisher because we don't want to promote piracy. You know. A lot of schools are using pirated uh, software such as uh, Adobe InDesign. Okay, so our attendance policy is you will no longer receive a certificate of completion and will be disqualified from joining the competition if you exceed the allowable two absences. So you're, you can only be uh, out for two sessions. After that, uh, you will no longer be given the certificate of completion. So the assignment period for the participants will be the whole month of September. So we, we end at the, at the 30th of August, 
but uh, you will be given the whole month of September to do the four-page newsletter. And then it will be submitted on the 1st of October uh, 2018. Um, then evaluation or uh, yeah, the evaluation of your outputs will be done by the by our school for two weeks, and that will be on the first to fifteenth of October. And then the following day, October sixteenth, we're going to announce the best teams or winners. And the awards that we're going to give will be. Okay, top three best news page, top three best editorial page, top three best features page, top three best sports page, top three best photos, top three best cartoon, top three best layout and page design, and then the top three best groups. So this is actually our training schedule. So we are now starting uh, the first session, first orientation and overview campus journalism uh, it will be followed later by the first session on photojournalism and then on Thursday we're going to have a session on news writing um, then by next week we're going to have editorial and column writing uh, and editorial cartooning followed by feature writing and then uh, on the last week of August we're going to have uh, the sports writing and the basic layouting sessions. The last session would also be the, uh, the time for the newsletter production and assignment brief. Okay, again, may I request everyone to unmute yourselves or to mute yourselves rather. Okay, so I am one of the main coordinators, and beside me is Mr. Art Angelo uh, who will be uh, discussing about the overview on campus journalism. So these were actually the journalism workshops we conducted here in school in the last two months, June, July 2018. So I'm just going to show you a collage of photos. Okay, so this one is our sports writing workshop with Mr. Alvin Patal. Uh, this one is our layout and page design workshop.
Campus journalism deals with uh, an enjoyable activities, co-curricular activities that involves different tasks, okay, uh, involved in producing school organ or school publication, publication, wherein the students or the staff of our school um, paper are making or working on various tasks such as collecting uh, news articles, looking for uh, feature uh, subjects or taking photos and all. So that's what campus journalism is. It has something to do with an enjoyable co-curricular activities involving the task okay, being done among uh, school staff in production of school paper or school organ publication production or school organ production. Okay. So what's the legal basis of campus journalism in the Philippines? So here in our country, we have this what we call RA 7079, also known as the Campus Journalism Act of 1991, wherein uh, the press freedom among uh, school publications are being observed from the national level up to the school level. Also, it allows the, uh, the Campus Journalism Act of 1991 also establishes the different contests that would uh, serve as avenue for our students such as the Div Division Schools Press Con, Regional Schools Press Con, and National Schools Press Con wherein, of course, this is anchored to aiming, uh, or aiming to mold the journalistic skills among students in the school level. So it wants to practice uh, campus journalism or rather journalism in general starting from the grassroots level which which is the school okay so it promotes and protects press freedom from the school level so that's ra 7079 or the campus journalism act of 1991 so what are the functions of the campus paper okay so i have here the different functions that every uh, school paper advisor every school organ must uh, recognize before we come up with our school publication it's the main objective of our uh, seminar to produce a newsletter anchored to these uh, purposes or objectives so the first function is information function so obviously as we write okay everything that we will be writing on our newsletter our school paper they all aim to inform people from the school level as well as the community. Okay, what's happening inside the school or what's happening inside the uh, or within the perimeter of the community. It includes information that can be something that's news, it can be a science information, it can be a trendy information depending on the nature or uh, the objective of the writer. So every section in every school pay, uh, school publication has of course different functions or purposes. Okay? But the main objective is to inform our readers. Okay? The next function is opinion. So opinion function is uh, obvious or seen on our editorial pages or editorial columns. Okay? We are in which I express or the school uh, tackles and expresses the opinion through the school paper about relevant uh, date or relevant or uh, time uh, timely issues that involve the school the community uh, from the national level up to our school level or the local level okay education function okay education function of course allows our readers to get information on different topics such as today we have the science and technology pages we also have of course sports pages news pages all these are aimed to educate our readers okay watchdog function pertains to the role or the function of a school publication or a school organ in terms of uh, looking uh, and securing the welfare and the rights of the students okay be it the writers or the school and the students in general we serve as the voice and the eyes to uphold true fairness okay, through our campus paper wherein we practice or we uphold uh, credibility, we uphold fairness and so we get to be the guard or protector of our school and the community and our students as well. 
laboratory function because campus paper serves as an avenue for our student writers, student journalists to develop and uh, to discover, improve, and develop their journalistic skills, their experiences in collecting data, writing, and producing school paper. Okay, is of course uh, are of course all true to the school paper, the campus paper, being a laboratory or learning place for all of them. Documentation function because campus paper or the training that's given in campus uh, paper production okay, also includes a documenting important events in school such as intramurals, graduation rights, or completion rights, among many other activities that are needed So, yeah. so going back, so going back to documentation function. Documentation function also is one of the roles of campus paper because our student writers, okay, are being asked to document, to record, to come up with write-ups or articles about the different school events, okay, or even community events that are being uh, held inside or outside school, okay? Entertainment function, this uh, is obvious, uh, particularly on our feature pages because feature allows variety of stories wherein uh, more than informing it also, or aside, Aside from informing the readers, uh, articles and feature pages also allow the readers to be entertained because of the uh, diversity or the variety of subjects being presented uh, on these pages. So the readers get to be entertained by the different stories that they read on feature pages. Developmental function because as a whole, okay, student writers and teachers are given the chance to improve themselves through the different activities that are relevant to campus paper from the training, different workshops that they attend to, and to the different competitions available relevant to campus paper, which are of course all strengthened and started because of the RA, uh, RA 7079 or the Campus Journalism Act of 1991. Okay? So these are some of the many functions or roles of campus paper in our different uh, schools okay, that are being practiced on here in our schools since the very beginning which we would like of course all the participants to also uh, spearhead after this uh, orientation or this seminar workshop so that's uh, okay so if you have so right now we will be entertaining uh, questions from our participants uh, regarding your queries on the guidelines or uh, guidelines of the seminar discussed by uh, Mr. Ilumbaling earlier and if you have concerns with also the topic I just discussed. Thank you. I hope you can hear me clearly from your monitor screens. So welcome to the first session of Casa National High School's The Journey, Exploring and Learning Campus Journalism. So my topic for this afternoon is all about photojournalism. I am Ian Benedict A. Rojas of The Coconut, um, the official student publication of Quezon National High School. And later on, you are going to meet one of our photojournalists here in the publication, Alan Rafael Ocampo, to share his experiences and um, some of his tips in taking good photographs for the newspaper. They can hear me now.
I hope it can, you can hear me now. So, as I said earlier, uh, my topic for this afternoon is photojournalism. I am Ian Benedict Rojas of The Coconut, um, the official student publication in English of Casa National High School. And later on, you're going to meet one of our surplus checker audio things. and some of his tips in taking good photographs for the newspaper. So you may ask, for example, what is um, photojournalism? Well, photojournalism can be simply put as a man piling up bricks. It could also be a girl running or a carpenter putting up a building. It could also be a boy taking a bath or janitors cleaning up the stairs, the neighborhood lining up to throw their garbage, or two little boys joking around. It can be a grandfather carrying his granddaughter or a grandmother waiting for someone to arrive. It can also be an old woman and a man sewing. I hope you can see the man from the picture. So with that, let's define photojournalism as a medium of communication that uses a universal language to convey facts and information in an honest visual report of what happened right in front of the lenses. So it's, it uses the universal visual language. It uses pictures to, to share information or to communicate. This is reporting in front of what happened or reporting what happened in front of the lenses of our cameras. Further, it is telling a story with a picture. Meaning to say, we don't really need text, we don't really need captions, actually, to, to know what's happening because the picture itself should, should speak for what is happening or for, for what um, the report is all about. It's um, unlike with news writing, feature writing for photojournalism, we report through the use of our camera, recording a moment in time, the fleeting instant moment when an image sums up the story that decisive moment. So why decided? Because in photojournalism, what we really need are action photos. What we really need are pictures that are alive. So when that event happened, when that moment happened, we really have to take a picture of that right at that very moment. Photojournalism, of course, isn't just a spot news picture on the Donald Trump-Rodrigo Duterte meeting. Datelines don't just change the quality of the picture. It could also be the local town council meeting where members are arguing about the tax increase. It could be from that national issue to that very local issue. It is also not just a national magazine cover picture showing the key play from the UAAP championship game between La Salle Green Archers and Ateneo Blue Eagles. It could also be the local high school team anywhere in the country 
playing for the town's glory. With that, photographers covering the present of the Philippines or mayor of the small town have the same mission to make an accurate reporting of the subject activities. Photographers covering the effect of climate change that led to people's death or the overflowing river in your locality which caused family members to be displaced have the same mission to convey the enormity or the largeness of the events in human terms. Meaning to say, photos should connect on the human level. It doesn't really necessarily need. Uh, it doesn't really need to be covering um, a national event or a really in, an international event. It could also be covering a local story. It could be an event that happened in your school, in your classroom, in the neighborhood. That's photojournalism, as long as it connects on the human level. Talking about human level, let us now have the human interest component of photographs that make it appealing. So when we say when we talk about the human interest, we are now going to to have a discussion one by one uh, of the elements of uh, photojournalism. One important element in photojournalism is prominence or involving the well-known. In the picture projected in your screen, you can see President Duterte. Of course, we all know how prominent um, Rodrigo Duterte is. He is the President of the Republic of the Philippines. So when we talk about prominence, we talk about the famous, we talk about the well-known, we talk about the, the people who probably have big names. In schools, um, who are the prominent people in our school? Of course, our school principal, our school heads, and probably some of the teachers who really made a big difference in the school community that could be one good subject of your photo. Another good subject of a photo involves consequence or events that affect people. What are the consequences that happen in our school? In this one, for example, this is um, a pride march in the University of the Philippines, which is really current. As, um, this is one of the headlines in, in TV programs, in news programs, okay? Another good subject is the bizarre, the curious, the unusual, and the amazing. Because at times, um, there are some um, student journalists who take photos of um, the common. All right? So it's, it's also a good subject if we take photos of the curious or the unusual, something that is not known, something that is not common to everybody. And then from there, um, we make a story out of it. It could also be a conflict, a clash between people, between and among people. This one is a rally. But in our schools, we also have conflicts, right? Um, we have even small conflicts that, that even, the, even though they are small, they matter. Timeless, a current situation. Of course, this is reporting. The same thing with, um, the same with news. What we need to report is what's really happening. As we say, um, what happened yesterday is probably not news anymore. It, it already happened in the past. So the same thing with photos, what we need um, to, to show, what we need to, to, to take uh, pictures of are events that are really happening as of the moment. With this one, this is of course um, uh, a killing incident. Um, this one came from one of um, the leading local newspapers here in our country. Um, the story has something to do with um, drug, a, a drug operation. Or the, the Oplan Tokhang, as we know it. Now, I've shown you some examples, I've shown you some, some elements. You may ask, sir, how do we take photos having technical and editorial values? Now, these are the, the little elements where the small elements that really matter in taking good photos. And so again, we would like to request everyone to please um, mute your screens. Please check your audio though. Can, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, thank you, Sir Michael. We hope of uh, again we would like to request all our participants to please um mute your your audio so that uh you probably won't disturb um our discussion. Okay. So again, you may ask for example how to take photos having technical and editorial values. Of course, this is not um, just a simple picture. Again, the picture should um, ex um, explain itself. The picture should tell something about itself based on um, the subject, based on the, the composition of the photo. And it needs to be, of course, like news reporting, it should have technical and editorial values. So let's have again um, the elements. The first one is the composition of the photo. So the composition of the photo is the emotive word to photojournalists on how to take a subject using important elements. So what's inside, what's inside the frame, what's inside the picture. Let us take a look at this example. So this one came um, also from one of the leading newspapers here in our country. All you can see in the photograph is um, a, two, um, a man and a woman, the woman embracing the the, the man. And you will see a placard which says, Pusher ako wag tularan. So from there, from the picture itself, we can already see that, or we can already infer that this is something to do with, with drugs. This is something to do with, um, with uh, a by-bust operation, as there is blood in the picture. Right? So for, from the picture itself, we can already see what the story is. Another important element in photograph is line. So this is um, one of the fundamental elements of composition. So we have actually different types of lines in photographs. The first one that we have here is um, the straight line. So the straight vertical line suggests power, strength, rigidity, height, and depth. Look at this one for example. So when we talk about lines, uh, when we talk about lines in photograph, what we need are actually natural lines. Lines that, that we can see in the environment, uh, not artificial. So with this one, the bars serve as our straight line here. Another type of line in photographs is the horizontal line, which, which suggests calmness, passivity, breath, weight, finality, and distance. Oh. Alright, so again, so please um, to all our participants, please mute all your audio so that uh, you won't disturb the discussion, so that our discussion will, um, will be smooth. So again, going back, the horizontal line suggests calmness, passivity, breadth, weight, finality, and distance. In this example, what you can see are um, men running. And the line uh, which is used here is actually the horizon. But I believe from this thing. But the horizon could serve as your horizontal line uh, in the image. Another one is the curve line. So the curve line suggests grace, beauty, love, and nature. The curve line in photos suggests movement. This one is a coverage of the Sinunog Festival. So as you can see in the picture, it, it really shows grace. Um, the body of the dancer, the body of the, the female dancer um, shows a curved line which shows movement, which shows grace. Next element is shape. Any shape, circle, triangle, rectangle, they are all shapes that usually represent three-dimensional elements. We have one example here. Um, this is one of the houses in Lukban Quezon during 
um, the Pahiyas Festival. You can see there are a lot of shapes here. You have squares, you have um, circles, you have other um, three-dimensional elements in the picture. Which adds, of course, beauty uh, and um, visual appeal in, in the picture. So what are three-dimensional subjects? First one is tone. It is created by shapes and is revealed by light. So I've, I've already um, shown some examples for, for shapes. So these are other examples for photographs that uses tone or that has tone. Another one is the texture. It is shown by lightness or smoothness and other types. Of course, in photographs, we cannot really touch it. We cannot really feel how smooth it is or how rough it is. But through the elements used, we can, we can infer that if it's smooth or not. Look at this one, for example. Um, a firefighter um, putting off um, fire. We can, really, we can see how, how rough it is. We can really see how intense um, the situation is. Next is the focal point or the main point of interest in the subject or simply put, this is the focus in the picture. This one is um, an example of a photograph which um, uses uh, different uh, focus, which is different focus. This is just but one picture, but you can see from the 18mm down to the 300mm, we're getting closer and closer to, to the focus of, of the picture. For 18mm, you will see the whole landscape and then to 24 to 35, it becomes smaller and smaller until we reach the 300mm which is now focused on, on the barn or, or on the house in the picture. This is actually an adjustment in your, in your camera lenses um, depending on what you want to focus on in the, in the picture. Visual harmony is the relationship of the background or the foreground to the main subject. Of course, if there is no visual harmony in the picture, there will be clamor, there will be, um, um, it will be a, a total clatter, alright? So we need visual harmony. All the elements in your picture, you may use, for example, three to five elements, but all of them should, should work together for you to, to be able to attain um, that um, visual appeal in your photographs. Look at this one for example, the zebra and the, the zebra and the, another element, another animal blending in the background. Another one is the perspective or the angle of the subject from a viewpoint thus making the dimensions closer to the eyes. So for, this, for the perspective, it actually depends on the, on the photojournalist and it actually depends on, on, on which angle or which part of the subject um, you would like to, to focus on. Look at this one for example. Eating. Next up, we now move on to shots which are the techniques applied on the actual size of the subject inside the frame. Um, before we forgot, eye contact, of course, um, conveys involvement. Eye contact in photographs are, are important because um, it creates an illusion that really the picture or the subject inside the picture is involved in the story, is involved in the event, is involved in, in the happening. Now let's go back, yeah, look at this one for example. The eyes, they tell a picture, they, they tell a story. Okay, now framing, the position of the subject using vertical and horizontal frame. You can see in the picture, for example, on, on the picture on the, on the upper left corner of your screen, you will see a man um, playing. Um, a skateboard or doing um, skateboarding. So the frame used here um, is the space between the pillars. All right. Meanwhile, these um, boys on the other picture are playing. So you can see the, the, the loop, you can see the hole, which um, serve as the frame. 
So talking about framing, um, again, the same with lines, the same with other elements. We have to be very observant in our surroundings. We have to be very observant in, in the field on where we are um, taking photos. Because from there, we can um, get natural frames. We can get natural shapes. We can get natural um, other natural elements. We don't have to create. Okay, because there are instances, for example, that um, we use uh, boards, we use um, other artificial elements just to make our photos appealing. Um, oftentimes, they do not sell. Okay, so we have to use um, natural elements which can be found also in the event where we are taking photos. So this one is um, for the shots. So the first shot that we have here is the close-up, which gives emphasis on the important message in the subject. You can see one this for, uh, with these photos, for example. It's focused on um, the face, the faces alone of, of the characters, close-up. Um, through close-up, we can see the emotions. We can um, clearly see what, um, um, their, through their eyes, what they really want to say. Another one is the shoulder shot. So from the word itself, it's taken from the head of the subject down to the shoulder. As you can see in the example. The bust shot is taken from your head down to your lower bust. The waist shot is taken from your head to your waist. And then full shot is taken from your head down to your feet. On most times, uh, for the full shot, uh, you have... Sir, delete. Okay. Can you delete all these lines? Delete those lines? All right, so this one, I hope... Uh, what you can see now is a picture of a man and... Any black and white photo? Alright, so this is an example of a full shot. Oftentimes, for full shot, you can, you can also see the, the background in and the foreground. Next one is the long shot, which includes yeah, the foreground and the background. The foreground is the space. The foreground is the space um, before um, your subject, and then the background is um, the space behind um, the subject of the photo. So with this one, for example, you can see the long line or the long stretch of probably card catalogs. And then this one, you can also see... And with the other one, you can see the, the space um, before the photographers. Now, another key element in photography, and so is with photojournalism, is light. This has always been the key to photography because with good lighting comes good photos. We have different types of light um, in photographs. The first one is the front light, so the light is coming um, in front of the subject. But there is actually one disadvantage here. If you use front light, the tendency is the subject will look flat. The subject will um, you won't really see the, the three the the three dimensional elements in, in the subject when you use front light. Another one is the side lighting. The, the light is coming from the side of your subject, of course. For back lighting, um, what you will mostly get or what will mostly be the result for back lighting is silhouette. Silhouette photos. And then top lighting, of course, um, natural light is the sunlight. In photographs, it is also important that we use, again, natural lighting, which is, of course, the sunlight. 
through light, we can get um, good color, we can get um, three-dimensional, we can see clearly the three-dimensional effects or elements in the picture. That's why it's mentioned in the previous slide that this is one of the key elements in photography. Now let's now move on to captioning because um, part of um, your output, uh, part of the output of the participant is um, pictures and in newspapers, captions are necessary. Newspaper captions are frequently no more than a line or two in length. Sometimes the picture's position on the page and the layout of the text around it indicates the story to which it refers. Meaning to say, we don't write captions. Um, we don't write the caption of the of the picture um, in 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 a space which is very far from it in the newspaper. Um, you, you usually write the the caption below the picture. A caption should be adjacent to the picture where it can be found quickly by a reader and of course adjacent also to, to the content or to, to the subject in the picture of course you do not write a caption which is not related to to the picture the first few words of caption of a caption are like introductory paragraph of a story they have to attract the interest of the reader usually um, for, for two lines for, for captions that has uh, for, or that have two lines the first line tell something about the picture. Um, you describe what's really happening in the picture. And then the second line, you um, are additional details. If you could um, secure interviews from your subject, you can use that for the second line, um, uh, second line in the caption of your picture. So captions should form a link between the readers and the event shown in the picture. I think I've already mentioned that earlier. Captions are best written in the present tense. The same thing with news, of course, it's reporting. It's happening at the moment, so we use present tense. Using the past tense reduces the immediacy of the picture. Verbs should also be active rather than passive. So these are some of the things or words, phrases, that we should avoid when writing caption. For example, our picture shows, picture yesterday, shares a joke. Well, of course... You, really, you won't really know if that is a joke or not, alright? So, tell directly what is happening in the, in the picture. Look at this one for example. Um, this is a picture of uh, a boy um, in a coffin, and then a mother crying, and then a man comforting um, the woman. So, the title or the catch line, um, the title of the photographs usually is called um, the catch line. You can see mother's grief. That is called the catch line. Zaldi de los Santos comforts his wife, Lorenza, who arrived yesterday from Saudi Arabia beside the casket of their 17-year-old son, Kian Loy. So the first line tells exactly who or what is happening in the picture. Zaldi, the man, comforting his wife, Lorenza, and then casket of, the seven, of their 17-year-old son, Kian Loy. And then additional details for the second line. Why is he dead, for example? The boy was killed in a police anti-drug operation in Caloacan City on Tuesday. Another example, duck eggs shipped from Candaba, Pampanga are thrown into the fire to be destroyed at the quarantine compound in Zamboanga City to prevent the spread of the avian flu virus. This is just one line, but you can see the first few sentences or the first few words Say exactly what's happening in the picture. Dot eggs being thrown into the fire, and then additional details for what reason to prevent the spread of the avian flu virus. Now this one is um, from our school paper. You can see the picture, and then the caption. The catch line says, "Young advocates." Children of Ibabang Iyam, Lucena City, developed the sense of environmental stewardship at their young age. Segregation of garbage and falling in line come as a daily routine while waiting for their turn to have their garbage properly disposed. Another one. This one. Amra Feldivilla of uh, grade 9 SE Titanium 
receives first place of certification during the 2017 Jory Logan San Beda College Senior High School. The Coconuts Chief Cartooning emerged victorious in the editorial cartooning category. As we with this example, um, this is not actually encouraged because this, is, this looks like a firing squad. So again, I've mentioned earlier, what we need are action photos. Yeah, this one. Um, one student interviewing our school principal, um, Dr. Felisa Quevada. So the caption, catch line says, clarification. QNH's principal, Dr. Felisa Quevada, opens up the plans for the school's development this school year in an interview by a coconut staffer. So other terms for pictures in, in newspaper are cut, is cut. We, use, we call the picture cut, and then the title as catch line, and then the caption itself as the cut line. Yeah, this one. Care for your children of the construction workers find a playground under the ongoing construction of the e-building in Casa National High School, unaware of the falling debris. Another example for um, captioning. Again, these um, pictures came from our school paper. Okay. This one, an earthquake drill. You can really see the movement. You can really see um, how intense the earthquake drill is. Mr. Albert Obina, identify the picture. Uh, identify the, the subjects in your picture. If you happen to get their names, if you happen to secure an interview, that's very good. So this one, you will see that the dot cover and hold, and then additional sentence, the drill is in response to the LDR MMC's thrust to intensify earthquake preparedness in school. This one is a sports um, picture. So the same thing. Even in news, even in, in feature pages, um, pictures need captions in all parts of the school paper. Alright? Okay. Uh, at this point in time, um, I will now be introducing to you, um, Alan will be, will be sitting down to show some um, of the photos he took and his experiences and probably some of his best tips in taking the photos. Um, so, good day everyone. Um, I'm Alan Rafael Labampo, um, one of the photojournalists of Quezon National High School. Um, so, to begin with, um, these are some of my photos. So in this picture, um, I use the element rule of thirds, which is the, um, the subject are aligned between the grid lines. And so um, in this picture, um, I use leading lines, which um, leads to the subject. Um, and also I use the framing and shapes. So again, um, in this picture, um, I use the basic element, which is the rule of thirds. Next, um, also this one, um, I use the element rule of thirds and also the framing. So in this photo. Um, I use the element framing then then lines so the lines um, lead um, lead to the subject which is um, um, the man so next is So those are some of the photos by um, one of our photojournalists here in Casa National High School. Yes. And that basically wraps up our discussion on photojournalism. So, 
If you have questions, please feel free to, to write it in our chat box so that we can respond right away and then give you probably clarifications. Uh, one question here is, how do I respond? Alright, so first question that we have here is Is there a limit of words for a photo caption in DSPC or any during contest? Alright, um, the maximum words in a caption is 30 words, Sir Michael. That's um, the, the, shorter the, caption. the shorter the caption, the better. Okay. It's more precise. So, 30 words. Another question that we have here. Any tips and tricks in taking photographs? Well, um, there are, um, the tips and the tricks actually vary from one photographer to another. But if there is one thing that um, I could say, if there is one thing that I could say, is to really immerse yourself in the field. Really immerse yourself in the field. Say, for example, if you have to kneel, and then kneel. If you have to bend, and then bend. As long as you can take um, good photos, all right. Um, do not hesitate to ask the subject to do what you believe will make the best shot. But um, post photographs are not actually encouraged. Post fo post photographs are not actually encouraged. Concentrate on facial expressions. So again, just and emotion of the subject. So again, just one thing. You as the photographer or you as the photojournalist should immerse yourself in the field. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. Practice makes perfect. Another question that we have here is catch line a requirement or an additional point when judging a photo? Yes, sir. Catch lines are necessary. Do the photos always have to be candid? The candid the photo is, the better. I mentioned earlier, post photographs or we ask our subject to do this or to do that is not actually encouraged. So some more questions from our uh, very active participants in this webinar. Any questions from our student participants? Uh, I believe there's none. So that basically again wraps up our discussion on some of our um, best practices. Oh, yeah, we have another question coming. What's the most simple yet effective camera to use? Um, for, for contest proper, for, um, for DSPC, for um, NSPC, what we only use is the point-and-shoot digital camera, which um, starts from 12? 12 megapixels. 20 yeah, the, the, at most At most is 20 megapixel. At most is 20 megapixel because there are 20.1, 20.2, but... Um, that will not be allowed. So the most is um, a point-and-shoot digital camera with um, a 20.0 megapixel. In, in contests, um, we are not allowed to use um, SLR, DSLR, but in our school paper, we can use that book. Sir, what are your unique ways in training your photojournalist? Unique ways in training your photojournalist? Uh, very simple, sir. We just um, give them a topic, we just give them a subject, and then we immerse them in the field. Bring them. We bring them to the field. 
uh, very simple. Then then take photos as much as uh, as many as they want in a limited time so that they can also practice that because in contest proper in the SPC they are only given um, one hour for taking photographs and then another hour probably for for the captioning. Some more questions from our participants? Can I submit pic for feedback next yes. session? Yes, sir. Yes, po. Is this available po for offline we the viewing? We have a recorded. Um, yes, we have a recorded video of we have a recorded video of the slides and we will be uploading it in our official web in our official web page where you can view um, all our discussions po. We will do that as well, sir. Thank you. Later view. Yeah, yeah for later viewing, yes. Um, the recorded one which will be uploaded in the official web page. Session. Question. Thank you so much, Ma'am Andrea. See you all on Thursday. We're happy that you learned po. It's a Thursday. What? Another requirement I would be teachers that and then their news writer. They is it not need to. Uh, for our participants who are still online, so the focus on Thursday will be news writing. So with that, um, we will only um, we will require the teachers and the news writers of your school papers. I didn't have to. Um, you don't have to invite all your journalists. You don't have to invite all your student journalists. I'm um, just um, your news writers. Oh. No limit po as to news writers. I believe we're only given. No the official would only be one. One. No? One per school. In the contest, no? Yeah. Uh, official participant. Registration. Uh, in the official registration, po, Sir Michael, um, only one news writer. But uh, no, they can let their other students. But, but, but you can let your other students join the, the webinar for, for information then, po. But the, um, only one is um, in the registration. Are the videos downloadable? Mm. We have be, the if they have YouTube download. Yeah, if, if you have YouTube download or if you have um, third-party um, um, third apps that you can use in downloading videos, yes. Well, as the videos will be uploaded in the, man, in the official web page. My school opens on the 28th, Papo. I'm not sure if teacher can attend Thursday, but I sent my teacher the link, Po. Thank you so much, Sir Miguel. Is this okay? Yes, yes, sir. That, that would be fine. As long as I may participate from their school. After all, um, our main focus here is to really share our best practices here. So the larger the audience that we have, the better. Last questions before we finally wrap up this discussion. So I believe there there's none. Thank you all so much for um, for participating in this webinar. So once again, those are um, our our uh, thank you all so much, Paul, for participating. And again, that that's it for our discussion on photojournalism. Uh, we'll see you all on Thursday uh, for news writing at 3 o'clock with Sir Ramonito Elumbaring and one of our news writers here in Quezon National High School in the Coconut. Thank you all so much. Have a good day.